This is episode six of the Novotel webinar series, An Introduction to GNSS. I'm Peter Saw, Business Development Manager for Defence and Military at Novotel in Hexagon Autonomy and Positioning. Here we'll explore techniques for delivering GNSS time and position in conditions where it's made difficult by unintentional or deliberate interference. While Defence has led the effort against deliberate interference or jamming, most of the techniques in this session apply across all industries. This series builds on our expertise in the industry and in literally writing the book on GNSS. If you're ready to dig deeper into these concepts, then please do check out our book, An Introduction to GNSS, on our website, novatel.com. Position, Navigation and Timing, or PMT, is a fundamental enabler not just for navigation, but also for timing. Secure communications and networks often derive precise time from GNSS, and trustworthy PNT is necessary for so many modern services. GNSS is still the only PNT system that has 24-7 global coverage with absolute position in latitude, longitude and height. And if it's used correctly, it is trustworthy. So we need to ensure that it's available. But the weaknesses of GNSS are that the signals are on fixed known frequency and the power of the signals when they reach the Earth's surface is weak. They're susceptible to being overpowered either by local interference or deliberate jamming and indeed to being deceived by false signals or spoofing. The good news is that there are ways to protect your GNSS system in a contested environment. The aim is to provide actionable, reliable position, navigation and timing, PNT, despite contested conditions. In defence circles, we call this assured PNT. We can use multi-constellation, multi-frequency GNSS, encrypted signals to deal with spoofing, open signal spoofing detection, anti-jam antennas and other sensors together with GNSS and situation awareness. Contested GNSS is not a theoretical issue, but it's an everyday and growing problem. The openly reported problems include local jamming, for example, used generally illegally by people who want to hide their location from tracking devices. Deliberate high powered jamming designed to disrupt infrastructure and military operations and spoofing, which is when your system is fooled to believe that it's in a different location or a different time. So let's recall the journey of the satellite signals through space to antennas, receivers and onto our applications. Mitigation techniques and equipment can be used to protect your position and timing at every stage of the signal's journey. Fortunately, the mitigation techniques are additive. The more of them you use, the better the protection. So that's why we recommend a layered defense. As we explained in episode three, there are multi-constellation and multi-frequency GNSS signals to choose from. The use of as many signals as you can access improves both accuracy and reliability. This also applies to regional augmentation systems and correction services if they're available to you. There's plenty of choice, but we need to be discerning. The principles are the same for all, but each GNSS has subtly different qualities suited to certain applications and regions. The satellites also provide encrypted GNSS signals. For government authorized users, encrypted GNSS is used to defeat spoofing. In GPS, the encrypted signals are the PY code and the new M code. To get the benefit of the anti-spoofing technology, a suitable military receiver must be loaded with the correct encryption key. Similar systems are in operation or planned for other GNSS. The next stage of protection is at your equipment with, for example, an anti-jam antenna. Also, we can detect spoofing and we can improve robustness by using other sensors. And situation awareness gives you actionable data. The antenna is the front door of the PNT system, so we need to ensure that it is secure and only lets in the signals we desire. 
Anti-jammer antennas dynamically change the shape of the gain pattern of the antenna in response to the unwanted signals. Nulls, which are areas of no signal amplification, are directed towards the interference, so only genuine signals from the satellites are used. This is done with multiple antenna elements on one array. These can null in the same number of directions as one less than the number of elements, so a seven element array can null simultaneously in six directions. Also, additional jamming signals can be excised by advanced algorithms which discriminate by frequency as well as the angle of arrival. Beam steering systems go further by pointing beams of increased gain towards known satellites. This needs knowledge of the satellite positions and the position and heading of the receiver, so it's a complex approach that needs extra hardware and different algorithms and software. Both kinds of antenna protect against jamming. They also defeat some spoofing if the receiver is already tracking. At the receiver level, we can now detect spoofing so you can take appropriate action. Recall episode two when we explained the difference between jamming and spoofing. While jamming attempts to block your GNSS signals completely, spoofing seeks to deceive your receiver. Spoofing is done with either rebroadcasted real signals or false signals from a simulator. For users of open signal GNSS receivers, there are emerging spoofing detection methods Knowing that you're under a spoofing attack means that you can take steps to use alternative measures and to use the GNSS information wisely. Attacks might be matched and variable power, jamming followed by spoofing, the use of software-defined radios, even spoofing before the receiver starts up. Novatel has recently demonstrated that these attacks can be detected allowing remedial action to be taken. By using additional sensors that respond differently to conditions, the solution can be made to be robust, as we described in episode five. Robustness comes from using complementary, dissimilar or heterogeneous sensors, which provide position and time data and rates of change. But the way they work is different so they're not susceptible to the same weaknesses. While each of the elements may have drawbacks, together they can provide continuous PNT data. The classic way is GNSS plus IMU. It's best to use tight coupling techniques that make the best use of advantages of the sensors. The algorithms in the GNSS receiver are aided by the IMU, so the system gives a solution even when fewer satellites are visible than are normally needed. More sensors, such as visual techniques, radar, LIDAR, and many others can be used. And with advanced algorithms, sensor fusion can provide a comprehensively robust system. Finally, GNSS situation awareness is needed so that you can make informed decisions on which PNT system to rely on, and those which may succumb to attack. Modern GNSS receivers can examine and report on the signals which are inaccessible to other tools as they're below the thermal noise. And as I mentioned earlier, we can now detect spoofing with open signal receivers. Also, anti-jam antennas can be used to provide information on the strength and type of jamming signals and they can give information on the direction to the jammer. This situation awareness allows you to make informed decisions and take appropriate action, and it's an aid to being able to attribute the interference to its source. To summarize, we recommend a layered defense. Select the right GNSS signals to use and use as many as you can. If you're authorized, use encrypted GNSS and make sure that it's keyed. Employ open signal spoofing detection, use an anti-jam antenna, and use complementary heterogeneous sensors. GNSS situation awareness is also important because understanding the environment is a great help in overcoming adverse conditions. So as you can see, 
GNSS position and timing is truly achievable in a contested environment. It just requires ingenuity, suitable equipment and the right tools. Our series will conclude with our next episode and that explores the ways that we rely upon GNSS technologies in many industries including agriculture, automotive and defence. If you're ready to learn more about GNSS technology, download our Introduction to GNSS book at Novatel.com. Thanks for watching.